as life at university continues to be a little bit depressing, I thought I'd try to do something a little bit more positive today and share with you guys how I put more depth of colour into my cyanotypes, making the blue pop just that little bit more. Taking your cyanotypes from something like this to something more like this. So let's crack on. Great. No sound pollution at all. And it started to rain. Never mind, we'll crack on. The system that I use is basically uh, a two tray system. Uh, your first tray, that obviously is just water for your developing. The second tray is where all the magic is, is where the magic happens. In this tray, I'm going to put hydrogen peroxide. Uh, just basically your normal hair bleaching bleach. Um, however, the stuff that I use is only 3%, which makes it about four times less powerful than hair bleach, than the, the products you get for, for bleaching your hair, um, and therefore, consequently, much, much cheaper. And the added bonus is, as you can see, you only use a tiny little bit of it. That's all you need. So literally, it's pennies worth of hydrogen peroxide. Now, at this point, we should have all got to, uh, to this kind of stage where we've got a developed image. Now, I've quite deliberately, I hope, very badly overexposed that image um, in an attempt to try to show you a little trick to recover your images just in case you do the same and to also prove to you that at this stage overexposure is much better than underexposure. You may have reached this stage and come across some instructions uh, it's very widely accepted that to, to develop a cyanotype, you need to soak it in, into water, into cold water, for about four minutes. It's really important that any of you that have got timers or are using your watches, put them away, because that is not very good information. The length of time that you develop your image for is very dependent on what kind of exposure you've you've achieved. Now, if you dip your, if you just blindly dip your uh, your your image into water and sit there for four minutes, if you've underexposed your image, you may well sit there and just watch your image disappear before your very eyes. Obviously, not ideal. So, what you need to learn to do is actually use your eyes. Um, what I do is, when I submerge the image, I start to look for the development of the highlights. Um, and as you can see, some of my image, well, my image itself, is actually a negative. We'll deal with that in a moment. What I'm looking for, when I'm soaking the image, like I say, is the highlights. Once the highlights are fully developed, in your opinion, I then start to look at the shadows and the midtones. Now, once this, the blue, the second the blue starts to disappear in the in the low lights, that's when you remove your print because that's when it's going to start washing away. Now, as you can see, this image started off as a negative. If you've, over if you've overexposed your image, that's exactly what it'll do. But the longer you leave it in the water, it will turn back into a positive image, as this one has done. And you can actually see the yellow of the ferric ammonium citrate start to come out of the picture. So what I'm doing now is I'm very carefully watching for the highlights and trying to see the mid-tones start to develop. And we are 
very nearly there. I'm just watching the highlights develop themselves, come to the fore, looking for the mid-tones, and then when I'm happy, and before the dark blue starts to fade, I'll pull the, I'll pull the item out. For me, that has just about now fully developed. So the next stage, and it's important you pay attention to how quick this is, the next stage is to take this out of the, out of the water and literally, as you can see, it's quite a nice blue, it's quite nicely toned, it's got nice graduation between the tones, but if you then run it literally through the hydrogen peroxide, literally as quick as that, take it out. Now I don't know whether you can see that on the uh, on the camera, but that the blues on that have suddenly gone much, much deeper. Now that goes straight back into the water to get rid of the hydrogen peroxide and to stop that reaction. And then all that's left to do, basically, is to rinse your image in running water for around about 10 minutes. Now, when you take your image out of the rinse, you may notice that it has slight patches of greeny yellow in the highlights. Or you may notice that there's a slight yellow tint to the to the drips of water coming off your print. Now that is because ferric ammonium citrate can sometimes be quite awkward to get out of paper. However, there's a very simple trick. If you take your print and go back outside and expose your print to direct sunlight, you'll very quickly, in a matter of seconds, see the yellow start to fade as the ferric ammonium citrate is eroded by the by the uh, the UV light. After that, then all that's left to do is hang up to dry. Now, as it's quite nice today, why not hang it outside? That way, the UV light can continue to brighten your image, making your highlights even more highlighted and getting towards developing just a little further, some of your mid-tones. I hope that's cleared up some of, the, uh, some of the mysteries for you. I hope you've found that interesting. And if you have, please don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and to subscribe.